Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome to my YouTube channel and our next creative, ta creative time together. Would you believe it? I start the video and I instantly start with hiccups. You can't make it up. It's, ju it's just unbelievable. So, I'm going to create a card again off the cuff and I'm using a piece, well they're all pink frog card pink frog card the white base that i'm working on is four inches by six inches it's pink frog super smooth card 300 gsm i've then got a black card mat which is four and a quarter by six and a quarter and a card blank five by seven excuse me and what i thought i would use this time is my snippet stencil heart and we'll you will use that one uh, no idea where it's going but we'll go with the flow and just enjoy ourselves so i think i'll add some heart shapes to my background i don't know if i've got the blue card i did but we'll start with The heart stencil. I don't. I can't remember whether I've got a blue card down here or whether it's upstairs or downstairs. I was going to say that I'm using the blue that I used in the previous card. I'm using prize ribbon, but I'm going to add salty ocean to that, and I'm going to create another card. And the problem is when I start, I think, oh, don't want florals. Don't want. Oh, I can never make my mind up. So I've got my blending tools, which at the moment there's 20% off the blending tools until the end of the day, Thursday the 24th. So I've got two blending tools and I'm going to start with the lightest colour first. So I'm going to use Salty Ocean. And to pick up the colour, I'm going to hold my hands further down just to make sure I can pick up a really good layer of colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly add that colour. I'm not going to add the colour too dark. You can hold this in place, should you wish, with a piece of low tack tape. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hold it in place with my hands. And I'm holding the brush a little bit further up. And what I'm doing is I'm just blending the ink, going over the same area several times. I'm then going to take some prize ribbon, but take a smaller blending tool. And then I'm going to start off on the stencil and then I'll be dragging bits of both of the colours in. Just to add a little bit of that darker layer to my stencil. So just adding a little bit of a darker layer, but I'm really not pressing on hard at all and I can get a beautiful blend. Now, if you're not quite happy and you've got a little bit, say you've got a little bit of a line, just go over with your lighter colour and just blend that harsh line out like you would with your pencils, no different. So I've got a stunning blend. Let's just grab a wipe so that we can just keep our surface area nice and clean. There we go. Just so that we don't have any ink coming from anywhere else. And you have a stunning blend. So I'm going to take the heart stencil again and let's let's have a one down here just randomly see if there's enough ink on here without adding more and I'm just going to blend the ink and it will pick up the ink from the stencil as well that's at the edge of the stencil it will also pick up that ink and just keep going over the same area just to add that ink. And I've not added any more ink to the stencil. You can add 
a, a layer of low tack tape if you wish. I've then got the darker one and again I'm still not adding any more ink to my blending brushes. I'm just using whatever ink is just on the blending brush and then to get rid of those harsh lines just go over the area again with the lightest of the colours and if you lift that up you have a stunning blend. So again we'll then go down here and add another part of the heart and again I'm going to see if I can get away with not adding any more ink to the ink blending tool just to show you how much ink this holds. Let's hold that in place. Again if you don't like holding things in place just use that low tack tape. I've got a little bit of blue ink on my finger so just be aware of that. I'm then going to use the ink that's remaining just on the darker one. So again still using the two colours we've used before but not adding any more ink to my blending brushes. Again blend out those harsh lines. Just a beautiful beautiful blend. So we'll just get rid of the ink from my fingers. Now if you use your low tack tape it will hold that in place for you. So then I'm going to add a little bit down here and again no more ink to the ink blending tool just using what I've got on that blending brush. So I'm not adding anything extra just keeping the same ink that's on the blending brush already and not reapplying that ink. I'm simply going over the area with the same ink that's on the blending brush. So let's just place that over again. So just going over with those blending brushes. Let's add. And I'm not worried that I've got a touch of blue ink here. That's absolutely fine because I will be going over the top. Now I've got my first layer of ink on there and you see you saw that I didn't add any more ink so now I'm going to add onto the top layer bear with me so this time because I'm adding on the top and I want to go in with more pressure I'm then going to place some low tack tape over the top because I'm going to add more pressure and it will probably move. So we'll just add low tack tape just down here. And I can hear you saying, what, are you going over the top with the same colour? Oh yes. I want to show you what the a bit of blending and a bit of ink can do. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up more ink. You saw that throughout the background, you can't see that very much, so let's just lift this up a bit. You saw that throughout the background, I didn't add more ink to my blending brushes. Let's just lift that up a little bit. But this time, I'm going to add more ink. And this time, I'm going to go in harder with the colours. Not harder with the pressure of my hands, just more layers of ink. So you're going to then apply more ink, which we didn't do when we applied it the first time. We didn't do that. So you're going over now with more ink. got that at the edge of the stencil. Let's just have a look. I 
Yes, hang on a minute. Let me just remove that a little bit. Can you? And let's just take this and I can see what I've done is I've just covered up the edge of that stencil and I want the top off. So let's just place that back down. There we go. And now I'm going to reapply the ink again on the darker colour. So take the dark colour and it will pick up the colour from the stencil that's already on the stencil. But you are applying more colour. But again, go back just to get rid of those lines. So now if we move this, let's remove the low tack tape. Like so. There we go. Lift this up. You've now got that layered over the top of the same colours. So let's take this again. I've got the low tack tape on a piece of my monster craft sheet and it just keeps moving. There we go. So I'm just using the same low tack tape because why wouldn't you? There we go. And then take this. So now I'm going to repeat the same process. So pick up more ink this time. And then go over with the more ink going over. Again, pick up more of that ink. So it is darker. Then I'm going to go to the darkest colour like so and we're just going to pick up that dark colour and add that dark colour but you're adding a little bit more of that colour and just blend out the edges then remove your low tack tape keep thinking where shall I put the low tack tape And just be careful because your low tack tape has got ink on there. So you don't want to spread that ink everywhere. So just be aware of that. OK, let's move this out of the way. So what you've got is layers of the hearts. So just move this out of the way. So you've got lovely layers of that heart just on there, which just looks gorgeous. Just layering the heart nice and simply. And then let's just put the lids on here. I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to flick the background with some water. There we go. Let's just move this out of the way. That's it. And I'm going to grab a piece of scrap card. So is that in here? So a little piece of scrap card. You could quite easily just spritz this with water and add this to your background. But I'm it's got a little bit of water on there, but I'm not too bothered. And I'm just going to get the edge of the heart just so I can see the shape. It doesn't matter that I'm going over the edge because this is going to be cut out. Just add that darker colour. Like so. And 
and then I can just cut this out. I could spritz that with water and add that to another piece of card. I will cut this heart out eventually. So I'm going to take, what do I do with my, oh, it's there. I'm going to take the prize ribbon and take some of that rich, dark colour. The blue is just beautiful. And then let's add a little bit more colour with that. We're going to paint with it. Now, before I carry on, can you see how I can even add an, a darker layer of colour? Even just adding that with water, you can make it even darker. So you can add that darkness. Pick up a little bit of the watered colour again and just blend that out. Pick up a little bit of this water and blend it out. And obviously it'll water the colour underneath, which is fine at the moment, we don't mind that. So I'm going to pick up more of this darker colour because I want it a little bit darker but what I'm trying to show you is, even if you haven't got many products, you can get beautiful results, even when you haven't got many products. So you can still get sort of a watery colour feel to your heart just with the Distress Oxides. Let's move this out of the way so we can carry on doing. So we're going to then take the Salty Ocean. We'll just grab a little bit of clean water. Let's get rid of that dark colour and we'll pick up the Salty Ocean and just add a little bit of, where's my water gone? Can't tell which is the clean and which is the dirty water now. So we'll pick up that Salty ocean and we're going to add the salty ocean just to add that colour. Go into your darker colour as well, pick up a little bit of the water, pick that up and just add a little bit of the salty ocean just to your background, just to build the depth up. Now, if you want to, we can do this in a minute. Do that in a minute, Tracy. Now, I'm, I'm building up the depth of that colour. Now, if I want to, let's grab some more water. If I want to sort of remove a bit of colour to give a bit of a light area, let's grab some kitchen roll. some clean water so we'll grab some clean water and I'm not even using a separate brush so I pick up the clean water and I can just place some water in here but this time lift the colour just so that it is a little bit lighter but can you see my water is becoming quite tinted now so if I remove that and use clean water so use the clean water and then you can just make this a little bit lighter at the edge just so that you've got that differentiation between the dark and the light so as long as you've got clean water take your clean water the other important thing is that you have the a good quality card that allows you to move that ink but now i can pick up i pick up my tinted water it's absolutely fine pick up that really dark blue which is the prize ribbon and i can go in and add another layer 
of that dark colour. Because I'm not lifting it up, I'm adding the colour back in. Pick up the tinted water and just adding that dark colour back in again. So I'm not going to dab the colour. I'm adding that colour just so it's a little bit darker. To nothing then pick up a little bit of clean and then we'll pick up can't speak salty ocean so pick up a little bit of that salty ocean and I'm just using clean water just so that I make sure I've got that lighter color with the salty ocean And you can still come in and you can make the area that's white less if you wish. You don't have to make it as, there we go. So you've got that lovely sort of blend of colour. Now I've not used any special pens, nothing, just distress oxides, that's it. So you can, so you can blend with your blending brushes and add layers of colour. You can paint with it and add layers of colour, take colour away, whichever you want. Let's just clean that up with some kitchen roll so we haven't got that moisture everywhere. And let's use a piece of clean kitchen roll. Make sure you've got clean water, which I won't have. It'll be tinted blue. Try again and you can still come in and just lift a little bit more of that colour, should you wish. So you can keep going and faffing, just like Tracy does. Let's just, and just lift the colour. And I'm, I'm getting something then that I'm really happy with. I mean, that I'm not being funny, but even with the lines here, add a sentiment, and it could be a beautiful card, just like that, quite easily. So I'm going to cut this out. Like so. And, and if you want to know what the scissors are, I just mention every now and then they're Pergamano scissors, which are curved. I'm sure you could use nail scissors as long as they're good and sharp. But I've used these for years. I know some of you love to use your larger scissors. I, I can't I can't cut out with larger scissors apart from my sentiments. But my my heart is now a distressed sort of shape. Don't forget. But, I mean, even that, even that as a card, put some of your scrap strips of paper underneath. So you could, so say you've got lots, let me show you. So if you've got lots of backgrounds like me that are spare, cut them up in strips and add that underneath. Stick it back together and add it underneath. Just, I might keep that there just to remind me to do that. So it doesn't matter that there's lines there. Make that part of your design. Just love it. But considering I've only used Distress Oxides, look at the blend. Just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Let's move this out of the way. So then this is eventually going to go on the top. 
let me just uh, it will be bent don't forget it's wet because i've used all that and that's going to go on the top and you've got layers of that color you know just because it looks monochromatic doesn't mean it has to be dull and boring but we're going to add more layers to that because i'm going to have this like sort of so that i can add things inside this you could even have it on one side so i will decide so then let's grab where are you what am i looking for can you tell me it's probably in here i then want the seed pods let's grab these seed pods So this, the Seed Pods one, is TE29. So we're going to use the Seed Pods. I'm just going to take my time because that's what I like. Creative Time with Tracy is about taking your time and enjoying that creative process. So I'm going to take those Seed Pods. I was going to use my piece of paper then to... That's not going to work, Tracy. Going to take vintage photo, maybe a little bit of scorched timber. So let's take the vintage photo just to get our image. So I'm stamping with the oxides. There we go. So that I've got the seed pods. And let's just grab some water and let's make sure which mine isn't that my brush is clean again you can have several brushes on the go at the same time so i've got the vintage photo down on there so if i then take this scorched timber now it's up to you where your light's coming from you know it's your artwork you tell everybody where your light's coming from and then you can have the light and dark areas some people have the dark area here and it light here saying the light's coming from there and i tend to have the light coming from here it's entirely up to you so let's move this out of the way so you can see what i'm doing right over the ink so i'm then going to add the darker color just to the edges and then blend out the vintage photo. You can take out some of that colour and just blend it out to that vintage photo a little bit lighter. Nice easy way to colour the seed pods or if you wish you can do the seed pods how they are in nature. Lucy, who's on my design team, did some seed pods and did them very realistically so that they look like the real seed pods in nature when they go very papery and pale and sort of um, see-through, translucent. So it depends how you want to colour them. Or you can do them like my other DT member, Anne, who coloured them and put them in an arrangement with the heart with lots of leaves it's entirely up to you how you want to do that it's wherever inspiration takes you so i'm going to add a little bit more darkness here but my aim is to show you just how versatile stamps are even if you haven't got much of anything else just inks maybe so let's just dilute that down and then you can drag this out so that it's a little bit paler and here so you can even color just with your distress oxides and my aim with my brand is to break down barriers barriers where people seem to feel it's really complicated i want to break those barriers down when we come to creating to show you that seriously i've had no training it's all self-taught 
and it's all about just enjoying the process. And I will also show you if I get it wrong as well, because I like to be all inclusive and just show the whole process. So I'm just using oxides here just to show how you can still create depth and dimension. So I stamped with the vintage photo and I'm adding a darker shade with scorched timber. And I'm adding the scorched timber and then as I blend out, my brush is still wet, so it blends out that vintage photo as well. And here, I haven't got enough darkness, so pick up a little bit more of that scorched timber and add a little bit more of that scorched timber so that that is a little bit darker. And then touch the edges with a little bit of water just so that that is blended out. And you can continue going in with a little bit more of that darker ink until you are happy that, oops, that you've got some dimension on there. And that is just using your inks. Don't get me wrong, I love all my pencils. I love using my pencils, pens or whatever. But I like to show that you don't have to have everything. And I also like to show just how versatile stamps are. And they really do represent good value. And the reason they represent good value, even more so than papers, rub-ons, um, ephemera, because you can use these over and over again. And if you've got the right image that doesn't date, you can use them from one year to the next. And that's what you should be doing with your stamps. You should be using them one year to the next, not forgetting about them when the next new release comes out. You should be combining them with your new releases, I feel, because it just it shows just how versatile those are. So I've added even more depth to that. And I can add some touches of white afterwards. So... Let's just grab the big scissors just to cut this card. And I can continue to add layers to that if, if I wish. Now, even if you just take one snippet from the video, that's wonderful. It means you're just inspired to create. And for me, that's all it's about. However you want to create, whether you want to create with stamps, papers or whatever, as long as you're enjoying that process, I think, that's the most important thing. So I'm going to cut out my seed pods. Now, you don't have to cut them out if you don't wish. It's entirely up to you. And my design team member did one where you just use, uh, you mask the images off and stamp layers that way. I've done that many times as well. Or if you want to do it that way, you can. But I love cutting out. I love adding, adding without a H, Tracy, cut out pieces as well. It just brings me so much fun. Now, if you want to cut out so that you've only got one sort of stem, you can cut out so that you haven't got that white area. You can cut out these stems like so and I'm leaving a very tiny white border. I personally find that it makes it a little bit easier to cut out certain pieces that's it and when when people often say you know I don't like doing this or I don't like doing that or um, this is hard work. I like to prove that you can break down those barriers and prove that it isn't difficult. 
that's what I'm all about. And to show that if I can do it, seriously, absolutely anybody can do it. Anybody. So I'm going to go right up to here. And I also like to show that you don't have to be trained in anything. It's about enjoying our creative time together. That's that's far more important to me. There we go. So I've now got my seed pods. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sort of creating an arrangement that's going to go in side my heart. But I don't want to add too much to the arrangement that I can't see. I've just put my hands in there. That I can't see some of that background as well. So shall we add another seed pod? There they are. So again, we'll just take that vintage photo, which gives me my base colour. Now remember... I'm not stamping with a permanent ink. I'm stamping with oxides, which is a dye pigment fusion. But because of that pigment element, you can stamp with them beautifully. But that sort of gives me a base to work with. And then using my scorch timber, like so, just to give me depth to the designs without needing anything else. So just blending that out into the vintage photo, then taking the neat colour and just adding a little bit of depth with that neat colour. And we can just go around and just add, take out a little bit of the moisture and you can just blend out the vintage photo. It's a lovely, easy way just to add some much needed dimension just to your seed pods. And I'm a great believer, whatever brings you joy, you colour the way you like to colour. I'm no professional when it comes to colouring. I just know what I enjoy doing, what I like doing, and more importantly, what I find easy. If I find it easy to do, I'm more inclined to do more of it. So that's exactly what I do. It's getting a bit dark in here. Can't you tell the autumn months are coming? So I'm going to go back in and just sort of dot a little bit more of that darker colour just at the edge. So again, a little bit more of that darker colour. Just dot this around the edges. Now that's nothing technical, just literally dot it around the edges. And then I'm going to take some clean water which will become tinted because I've got that brown on there. And then I'm just going to blend out a little bit more of that vintage photo and just get rid of those harsh edges just on my Distress Oxide. Pick up that tinted water and you can just blend out those harsh edges And if you want a little bit more darkness in, well, you can bring that in, wash it out and blend. And then we can blend these out just a little touch. And it just gives you that lovely blend. I'm not going to get rid of this just in case because I know exactly what I'm like. I don't like to cut out with a load of card. I like to sort of work with a smaller piece of card, just makes it easier for me. So again, I'm going to leave, the, if you want, you can cut it up so that, let's give an example. Um, so 
if I want these on their own, like so, I can cut around, sort of cut around that shape. There we go. Go all the way around. So I don't have to keep, you know, it all connected together. I can sort of separate those elements if I wish. Cut that off. And we could go right up to there. Leave that attached there. And then come down. So you can cut into individual stems. There we go. And then you can have separate stems. So you can, let's move that so you can actually see what I'm doing. So then you can have a separate stem that you can put lower down. And it's, it's a lovely, easy way to colour by using your inks. Especially if at the moment, you know, maybe you're waiting for Christmas and somebody's going to buy you some pencils or something, you know, that you're looking forward to. Well, this shows that if you can't afford those pencils, use the inks that you might have had for quite a few years. So let's bring in our card again and it means that I can sort of create my arrangement however I wish you see you can bring in obviously I'm going to be faffing a lot but I can bring in and tilt areas of it just so that I've got different sections so and I think what we should do then is just add a pop of red so let's just clean this up so that we're not going to end up in too much of a, a mess. And let's make sure that that brush is clean. So let's give this a little bit of a, a clean. And then I'm going to use TE26. Use that TE26, just move them out of the way. We'll just grab another acrylic block just because it's easier. And we'll take this one, which coordinates beautiful with the six by six inch stencil wildflower. I used all that spare cardstock, so we'll have another one. So we'll have a little bit of candied apple and then I need a lit something to give me a little bit of shading. Well, that's fine. What we can do is we can take the candied apple. Don't work over your white piece of card. So take your candied apple as your base colour. So that we can blend that. You can make the floral as long as you wish. And then take a little bit of that scorched timber again. A little bit of water. But this time we'll just pick up a little bit of that scorched timber. You're not going to be able to do it. Let's just shorten this card. And then I'm going to, I've got a little bit of scorched timber on here. Maybe grab a little bit of water. A little bit of too much water. And then we're just going to blend out this red candied apple colour. Now it's got no definition on there so I'm going to pick a little bit of that scorched timber just to give me a little bit more dimension, just a little bit of darkness just with that scorched timber but then I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to take some clean water and let's add a little bit more depth. Let's make sure it's definitely clean water. Let's add a little bit more depth by picking up 
more layers of this candied apple and just add more layers of that candied apple just to just to the design so I'm going to pick up even more and just add more of that candied apple a little bit of the water and you can just add just so that it's got a little bit more definition to the floral and obviously we can add some touches of white when we when we are ready so let's just take and when I'm doing these sort of creative videos it's not about rushing the process it's about getting the feel for what we want in our project now for me there's not enough depth there so what i'm going to do is take black soot look how much i've got it doesn't matter that the water's tinted we'll just rinse that a little bit it doesn't matter if it, it's better if it goes into the brown but let's pick up a little bit of this black and I'll put my card straight in it. And we'll just add a little bit of that black. Let's pick up a little bit more. A little bit of that black. Use the tinted red water and then come in with a little bit more of that red. Just to give a little bit more definition. Let's just bleed that so it bleeds into there. Now, how many of these florals? So shall we just, shall we stamp another one? Because I can make these as short or as long as I wish. So let's grab the candied apple. Let's just make sure, not that I've got a clean piece of kitchen roll. Let's have three of these. Depending on my arrangement, obviously I can make that as short or as long as I wish. There we go. So I've got three on there. It doesn't matter that I've got a little bit of moisture on that card. So you can see the difference in, in definition from each sort of floral. And whilst I do these ones, it gives that one time to just rest a little bit. So I'm going to pick up, I'm just picking up anything here. Let's grab, there we go. The brown tinted water's better. Not too much, pick up a little bit of that black. And I'm going to add a little bit of the black, which on the first layer isn't going to show up much because we go into that red and we blend that red out. Where's my black soot? Take a little bit more of the black soot. I'm not even going to clean my brush. Pick up a little bit of that black and just add a little bit of that black just to the edge then I'm going to go to I'll just go to the brown tinted water and then I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the candied apple and just by touching the black area just to blend that out go to that brown tinted water let's pick up the black And by using sort of a fine brush, it doesn't place too much down of anything. Not too much water, not too much pigment. It works quite nicely. 
Let's blend out into that red, like so. Then we'll pick up some more of this red and just blend that out a little bit more. And you can dry in between if you wish. I'm going to go down and add a little bit more of that red. So you can dry the layers in between should you wish. You can also, if it's completely dry, go over the top with pencils. But I'm trying to show you that you don't necessarily need all that. Pick up that black. And I can pick up a little bit more of the black. A little bit more of that black. And then let's grab some clean water. And then you can touch the edges just so that it starts to bleed into everything else. Then going to pick up more of that red and just come in with a little bit more of that red. That's the, that one's a little bit wetter than the others. But if you can let them rest a little bit, I think we'll just have a little bit of a clean up. If you can let things rest a little bit, that really helps with your layering of colour. Or you can dry it with your heat tool, whichever makes it easier for you. So I'm just going to cut these out and I'm just making the card a little bit smaller. Now my florals are wet. Well you've seen that. So shall we have one that's reasonably long? You wouldn't really cut out when your card is soaking wet. It's not something I would recommend mainly because your card will bend. It's 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 just what it, it does because you've added that moisture. I would let it dry completely and then cut out. But obviously when you're on a video, you don't want to see me just waiting for things to dry. I just do it anyway. And let's face it, I just hope for the best. And I've done it that many times now. I know sometimes what I can get away with. Sometimes I make a mistake, but there you go. So we've got the floral here. Let's make this one a little bit shorter. Just so I've got a floral that's a little bit shorter. Like so. You do realise I'm then going to pull all these pieces out from that heart. And start all over again to do the placement. But you expected that anyway, didn't you? Of course you did. Just take this round. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some white stamping, but I'm going to be quite happy with some white splatters. Take this. And I can see that these florals have got more depth than that floral. Let's make that one a little bit shorter. Again, I'm just leaving a white edge. And really, I would recommend that you do all your colouring first and then cut out. The reason I'm cutting out is just to give the florals a little time to rest before I add more colour. But personally, I would recommend that you let them dry, then cut them out. Do all your colouring and then cut them out because you can let them dry at your own pace. So for me, I need more dimension. So I'm going to take more of that red. So that's okay, there's red on there. So let's just, oops, a daisy. And we'll pick up this red. 
Now this one needs more definition, so I'm going to go in with more of that definition. And I'm sort of, sort of, I'm not sort of, sort of, I am just dabbing that. I'm going to go in with more red here, with more of that definition. And if I sort of d just use that dabbing motion, it's sort of got more of a natural, more of a natural edge. That's got a nice, nice bit of depth in there. But you can dry them in between and continue to add that depth. I'm going to have to clean that up, even though really I may need some more. So let's come in with this. So we've got all we've got some pieces we can play with now. And we've got that heart on there. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to add some white splatters to the background on the blue areas. Now, if your arm's aching when you're doing your splatters, this is a Posca paint pen. Give your Posca paint pen a good shake and then you can just shut the lid off. Give your Posca pen a good shake and then just press it down just to get that paint flowing. Don't press it so hard that you damage the actual nib. And then it's so much easier to splat it. You're not hurting your wrist and it's far easier. If you don't get on with Posca paint pens, what you can do is you can use your acrylic paint. Water that down and then splatter with that. Now, the longer I leave this wet medium on here, it's going to react with that oxide because oxide reacts with moisture. So what I like to do is just give that a little waft with the heat tool to stop it reacting too much. It still tints that, but then I like to add another layer over the top of what I've just done and then dry again, just so that it doesn't react too much. If you don't want that to react at all, then use your opaque um, bleed proof paints that I've shown before or where is it? I've got some Windsor and Newton gouache opaque. You can use that if you wish. You can just take a little bit of the paint. You don't need much. You can don't spritz with too much. Oh, look at me. Yes, why don't you just waste your paint by tinting it red? You, I don't want red. So always make sure that that brush is clean, which as you've seen, mine isn't. And I don't edit that out because I don't want to edit it out. I want you to see warts and all, because that's real crafting. I know the professionals do it really beautifully and edit things and it's, it's stunning, but that's not me. So let's just clean that. Right, shall we try again after we've just wasted that paint? There we go. Add a little bit of the white paint. Now, you don't want to dilute that too much because you're going to affect, affect the opacity. So just take that, get rid of any lumps. And if you can then do it this way, if you wish, wrong way, Tracy. Just tap your brush very lightly and you can make splatters that way. I find I don't make as much mess using my Posca pen, but you do get a beautiful white finish 
with that gouache or bleed proof, whichever you want to use, you do get a lovely white. So just decide what you like using. Now, that Winsor & Newton, beautifully opaque, beautifully pigmented, but that means you need to clean your brush thoroughly. And if you've got your jars of water, which any, when you're creating, you'll have jars of water, you won't do what I'm doing. I do this because trace is dangerous and will knock that over. That's why. Right. So let's just grab that kitchen roll. And I can see some moisture there. But so you can see, I have white on there as well. So different layers of the white, just so that you can see that. So then I'm going to take, now you would let this dry naturally. If you don't want to use your heat tool and cause your card to bend, then don't use your heat tool. Let it dry naturally. I've got white splatters there. So then I'm going to take some white cotton and the cotton for me adds texture to the design. So I'm going to pull out really long lengths because it makes it more natural if you pull out those really long lengths. It's, it's far, far more natural. Far, far more, that wasn't good English, but you know what I mean. It really makes it more natural. And I sort of pull it out and then go plonk. There we go. That's a professional team. So I've got my, which I will add white splatters to this. Of course we will. Let's grab our adhesives. And then you can add, you can add even more white if you wish by using your Posca pen. You can use your thinner one or you can use your thicker one if you want it. A little bit more prominent you can add it you can just add touches of white wherever you want however again if that isn't I've just washed the brush and I'm going to do it again if that isn't prominent enough you can take your gouache or your bleed proof paints you can pick up the paint and then you can just add the prominent white just to your project and you can see I'm using hardly any of that paint just to highlight even further the whiter area just to give it a little bit more prominence and again just to irritate you a little bit I'm going to clean that brush again let's move that out of the way but I don't tend to use much of that paint so a little tube goes a long way right so we've now got our heart and I've got the beautiful texture behind. So what I can do now is I can take my pin flare or your ultra thick gel medium or pieces of thick card that you add behind the heart to create dimension, whichever makes you happy. So I'm going to add a big dollop of pin flare. Now, because I've got that pin flare behind there, my florals will attach to that as well. So I'm not going to press it down too much because I want that dimension. So now it's my favourite bit. I love, I love playing. So I can take the, the seed pods and just add a little bit of adhesive. And because I've got that, that cotton, it really adds something. And don't add adhesive to every every sort of seed pod, leave some loose. Bend that floral like so. But let's take the florals and let's add 
a little bit of white to those just to mainly because Tracy just likes doing it really let's just face it and I haven't added any white to that disgraceful so I'm just going to add a little bit of white to my seed pods again you can use that white paint so that it's more prominent and again Tracy's going to do what you wouldn't do by adding white when you've got the adhesive underneath and it makes it twice as hard but I do like adding that so when it's totally dry I can go in with my paint if I wish and just add that over the top so then I'm going to take a floral so I'm going to add a little bit of the pin flare and then I can push this down I've even got a bit of adhesive on my hand look at the state of my hands look at the state of them so say that I haven't got enough on there well I am saying I haven't got enough on there so bring that down that's better and then Let's add this one sort of here. Again, I'm just going to bend the edge of that. Little, a little, a really good dollop. Let's add that one sort of behind there. Then I can take this one. And let's just bend that a little bit. Add a good dollop. And we can bring that. down here and I think I sort of want to continue to sort of see the heart shape so I don't really want to cover that up too much mm, let's, let's place you behind there honestly I'm terrible for faffing do I want that up there? Yeah, I do. You see, this is why you, you, you want a really good play. So I'm just going to add the adhesive to one, not the other. I can then tuck that right behind. And because there isn't adhesive on that one, that will really stick up and give more sort of dimension, which looks really nice on there really nice just love that and whilst this is in place let's just place this here like so just so that that doesn't clog up whilst i'm here so that the white can just be drying i'm just going to add some splatters to this heart and i want it to be visible that that's the, the heart. And then I'm going, let's get rid of this. Now, when you've used oxides on your stamps, just give them a little bit of a wipe because you don't want to then go to, I think I've got white paint on this. You then don't want to go to your stamp with the VersaFine Claire. So let's remove that. And then let's come back to the little stamp TE26, the Jar of Wishes. And we've got this smaller floral here. So let's take that smaller floral. Oh, I keep adding it to my card as if that's my acrylic block. I'm then going to take the Salty Ocean. We're just going to stamp that. Let's stamp two initially. So we'll just stamp two. That's with the salty ocean. So the lightest blue. Okay. Let's make sure that brush is clean, which you know now from experience and watching me that it's never clean. I'm then going to take the prize ribbon. Let's take the prize ribbon. 
little little bit of that water and I'm going to pick up the prize ribbon. Turn this, let's move this all out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, which you can't. I'm then going to add the darker blue just around the base. Let's pick that dark blue up. So just pick that really dark blue up. I'm then going to use the water that I can't even see and dilute that. So I've now got water diluted the blue. And then I'm just going to blend this out. Blend this out. And then take some more of that darker colour. Take some more of that darker colour. I really am enjoying sort of creating this way. Using the tinted water, don't have too much. And just blend the edges, just blend the edges of that. Now, if there isn't enough salty ocean, take a little bit of salty ocean, pick that up and then add some of that colour back in. Pick up the dark colour again and then just dot it around the edge. Because the card's wet, so it'll continue to wick out because that card is still wet so the distress oxide still continues to move then you can use that tinted water just to blend the edges and ensure that that sort of wicks out a little bit more and again you would really dry that before you cut out and if you're finding there's not enough of a blend a little bit more water pick up that salty ocean and go back in now you've dried it and add another layer of the salty ocean and it just I picked up the water there didn't I rather than the salty ocean but there you go so just pick up salty ocean you can then it continues to move but you can stop it from moving by just drying that and again i just keep playing until i'm happy with what i've got so i want it a little bit darker coming up and by just dotting that it's just just a more natural feel so I'm then going to, let's cut these out, but obviously with a smaller piece of card. Because it's far easier. I'm just going to give those, I think I've done with that now, let's move that out of the way. I'm just going to give those a little bit of a dry. or a lot of a dry, whichever. I'm then going to take my Posca pen and just add a little touch of white. And then I'm just going to cut those out. And what I'm hoping this does is brings the, the blue color from the hearts that are in the background and the pot into the arrangement. Okay. So it'll just bring that into the arrangement. We'll bend that a little bit. We'll cut this one out. Again, I'm leaving a little bit of a white border but that's entirely up to you and 
And again, you can make the branches, the branches, the stems as long or as short as you wish. So let's bring in our card. And I can just sort of dot. That's it. So let's grab the adhesive again. And it just brings that blue just into the arrangement, which I like. I like to bring that that blue into that arrangement. And it only needs to touch the card slightly. Um, down there. So a little bit of that down there. And shall we add this? around about there just adds that blue to the arrangement and then I want to just add some splatters to the florals just because then the splatters are in the background and on the florals looks more cohesive just so that you can see all those those florals I then want wording where's my little floral to put back again there is oxide ink on there so just give that a little bit of a wipe. And there's a very delicate birthday wishes on TE26. So let's take that little scrap of card. And I'm going to do this in my black ink. So let's move this out of the way and look for that black ink. So take the black ink. And this is not going to need much stamping at all. And it's very delicate, but that's perfect. So let's pick this up. I'm going to cut it to the size of the actual wording so you can see how fine it is. Let's bring this in just so that you can see the birthday wishes. And if you were sending it something special, you could actually sort of dot the birthday wishes coming out of your arrangement as well. I'm going to add mine here like so. So just add that here also if you want to add splatters you can also use gesso if you wish to give it sort of a chalky finish let's just add the birthday wishes there and then I want to grab my TE30 for the smaller wren. So let's grab the, the wren. Let's just try and remember to keep that acetate in there. And we'll just grab the smaller one. Yep. And then we'll just take a little. I can, do you know, I can't pick the acrylic blocks up. The acrylic block. And I'm going to take my Nocturne ink, take a little bit of card, there we go, beautiful. And then I won't touch that till it just dries a bit, so I don't touch the black ink. Then going to cut around my beard. And again, I will move the card rather than 
my scissors it's far easier that way to move the card rather than trying to get your hands in all funny positions and I do try to hold sort of the edge of the card rather than putting my fingers on the ink and if you can cut out the feet first it makes it so much more makes it a lot more easier i can't speak at the moment my english is terrible i can't see a thing let's move that out of the way there we go isn't it funny how you miss the the light evenings or i do now cut that out I miss the light evenings so I can just see what I'm doing because I can't at the moment. We don't want to cut the little beardy's foot off. There we go. Have I cut? You see, I've left. There we go. So I've got my little beard that I'm then going to add sort of here. But I want to add a little bit of cotton just to bring it to the foreground. And just to add a little bit of that diffused element to the heart. So let's take a little bit of this adhesive again. The little beardy there and you probably know what I'm going to say now we need to add a few little splatters to the beard let's see if my little one will work my little Posca pen oh yes it will so I'll just add another layer just avoiding the happy birthday wishes let's just just so that you can see that you've got the little little beard on there as well. So we'll now add this to our black mat. How long have I been on? Oh dear, doesn't the time go quick when you're enjoying yourself? So I'm going to add the adhesive. Again, it's obviously far better to add your adhesive and stick things down when everything's dry. When you've not got a heart that's got that pin flare on and it's moving all over the place because once it's solid it makes it far far easier for you so let's just add that there let's pick this up so it's a bit easier just to make sure it all makes good contact there we go and more often than not, when this is solid dry, I would just make sure you rub the back of the card just so that that adhesive is properly stuck down. We're going to add that to the five by seven inch card blank. So add that to there. Lovely. Make sure my card's facing the right way because that's usually so easy to do. Go. and then you can add an insert and also I don't need to add any shading can you see that natural shadow there because it's 3D'd it's got a natural shadow perfect so I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you've enjoyed the process and that you'll give that a go can't wait to see your interpretation. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.